What's going on everybody? In today's video, what are we doing? And what are we talking about? So the desk is yet again a complete disaster, <laughs> a complete mess. I've got a whole bunch of different pieces of development gear here. Uh, I got my computer here, this is the Windows 98 machine. Uh, but before we dive into uh, the development gear, I want to make a note of the uh, units that I have on display here today. This unit here is the Kyoto Microcomputer CTR Capture Debugger Unit. And this is a pretty cool little system. Now this unit over here, this is the Intelligent Systems CTR Debugger SPR. Now as you guys know, I have not really dove into the uh, 3DS development kits yet, uh, but that is coming. So not only do I have the Intelligent Systems Snake Box, but I also have these two units here. So that's gonna be pretty exciting once I dive into those. So I know you guys have been waiting for that, but some cool things have been happening in the 3DS uh, development scene for me. I've been making some contacts there, so I'm excited uh, for the videos that are gonna be coming uh, for this uh, 3DS development equipment that uh, again, I will be covering uh, very soon. Now, today we're gonna be looking at this really cool system right here. This is the Intelligent Systems Game Boy Flash Gang Rider. I'm gonna be giving you guys a complete hardware and software demo for this system. And now if you guys remember, it was about three years ago now, I think. And I did a full hardware software demo on a very similar system. And that was the N64 Flash Gang Rider. And so today when we go inside and take a look at the internal PCBAs for this unit, we're gonna be able to see some of the similarities between these two Flash Gang Riders. So I'll be going over how you hook this unit up to the Windows PC, and we're gonna take a look at the software for this unit, and we're gonna go over the process of dumping one of the uh, Game Boy Flash cartridges, and as well, we're gonna program one of the Game Boy demos onto one of the cartridges, and we're gonna then take a look at it using my Intelligent Systems capture unit, and they'll be able to preview that on the monitor. So that's gonna be pretty cool. So that's today's video, and I'm super excited to show this to you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. Before we start looking at the software for this unit, let's take a look at the internal electronics. When we remove the top cover, we can see the main power supply as well as several daughter cards. Each card houses a Game Boy cartridge socket. There is also a small PCB for supporting the indicator LEDs for both power and read and write activity. There is also some high voltage AC wiring for the main power supply. This includes the AC cable socket connector and a main power toggle switch. The eight daughter cards are held in place by two steel support rails, which are anchored by four screws to the enclosure frame. Adjacent to the main power supply is a large 20 watt 5 ohm wire round resistor, which is being used as a fuse and is actually quite common. By removing the support rails, we can then remove the daughter cards from the main interface board. As you see, each daughter card is outfitted with a Game Boy cartridge socket and a series of passive components. The bottom side of the board holds a 96-pin male interface connector. You can see the Game Boy cartridge socket, which is held in place by a steel bracket, 
bolted down to the PCBA. The back side of the daughter card holds an Altera Max 7128 CPLD, which is being used here as a memory controller. The JTAG interface for the device is located on the left side of the board via a 6-pin IDC connector. By removing all the daughter cards, we can have a look at the main interface board. As you see, this PCBA houses eight female interface connectors for the daughter cards. There are several logic control devices, passive components, as well as a dedicated voltage regulator for each of the eight channels. We'll remove the top interface board to reveal the main motherboard PCBA. This motherboard is an identical match to the board used in the NU64 flash gang router. Two dedicated EEPROM chips are used to store the system firmware. As shown, this board is dated 1995. Obviously, a special firmware has been programmed into these EEPROM chips, specifically for the Game Boy Flash cartridge programming. We also have the same NEC SCSI controller chip and the same Nintendo Virtual Boy CPU processor NVC-VUE. For those of you that are interested, you can check out the full hardware demo that I did for the NU64 Flash Gang Writer. Link is above and it's also in the description. The main DC power supply has a model number of RWS50A and provides the system with a 12 volt DC power source rated at 4.2 amps. This provides the needed power for simultaneous programming of up to 8 flash cartridges. Okay, so before we begin, we actually have to verify that we have our SCSI drivers installed. The first thing we do is we navigate to our settings control panel, and then we would go to our system, and then device manager. Now this is Windows 98, of course, so depending if you're using Windows 2000 or XP, those versions of Windows are the ones that are compatible with the software for the Gang Rider. As you can see here, I have my SCSI controller, which is my Adaptech SCSI card, which I have installed in my uh, PCI slot. And then here, this is the Intelligent Systems driver. So now if I double click on this, uh, you'll see that this is the driver here. Now, if we were to update this, and then you would navigate to the software disk that came with your gang writer. Most of the time you'll get a software CD or a floppy disk. And uh, with that, you will have uh, specific drivers for the intelligent systems hardware. And I have it under this folder here. And as you can see, there's a series of different uh, INF files. And so depending on the version of Windows operating system that you have, uh, that will be the version of the driver that you'll select. So, but of course, because I already have it installed, uh, we don't need to move forward with that. So once the software is installed, you can then reboot. Uh, make sure that your gang writer is connected uh, using the SCSI uh, interface cable. Uh, power has been connected. You have the SCSI terminator connected on the unused port. And you've also turned on the power to the gang writer. So once you've done that, you can then reboot the computer. And the version of the flash cartridge that I have here today is supported with the version 1.12 of the software. So that's the version that we're gonna be using today. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And the software boots up here, as you can see. So this is our main interface here. And we have eight different cartridge slots available on the Gang Rider they can program cartridges simultaneously up to eight separate units. So this was really handy for developers when they had to make multiple copies of a game in order to distribute that to magazine companies for review. Uh, you can see we have all the different functions that we can perform, whether it be a write, 
a specific ROM to a flash cartridge. We can also read the cartridge, essentially dumping the cartridge memory. We can also erase the flash cartridge memory, verify against a specific ROM file, a blank check, uh, just to confirm that the cartridge has been erased. So these are all just the different functions that we can uh, test for and, and confirm. So now each function has an options menu. So you can go in here and um, select a specific version uh, of a flash cartridge. Now these are the algorithms, the programming and flash uh, read and write algorithms that are available with the version of the software. So as you can see, there's different versions here uh, that are available. So there's uh, Game Boy Advance uh, flash cartridges. Uh, now these serial numbers here that we have in brackets, these are the uh, serial numbers or the model numbers rather for the flash chips uh, that are on your Game Boy flash cartridge. Uh, so you just have to make sure that you choose the correct one and you just, uh, you might have to open up the flash cartridge uh, case and the enclosure on that in order to confirm the model number uh, on the flash chips. So once you just confirm that, uh, then you should be fine. Um, and there, as you can see, there's several different um, models available. So the cool thing about this version of the software is that it has both the algorithms for uh, reading as well as programming uh, the Game Boy Advance, as well as the standard Game Boy or Game Boy Color uh, PIC development cartridges or the PIC development cartridges. So now as long as you confirm on the list uh, that, that the cartridge that you have is definitely on this list, uh, you can just go ahead and leave it on auto. So again, as I said, there, uh, there's a specific options menu for each uh, function that you're performing, whether it be a write, read, erase, verify, or a blank check. Uh, there's different uh, options here for you to fill out uh, based on your requirements. So right now we're gonna perform a read function. So we're gonna go ahead up here and select the read icon. And again, uh, we've, we've already validated that our cartridge is on the list. So we can just leave it as auto. And we're gonna choose our dump file name. So we go to the folder that we want to use to save our dumped flash cartridge. bin and we have verify after reading there you go and the read function is usually a lot faster uh, compared to when it's writing or programming the flash cartridge and there it does a verify comparing the file to the actual uh, cartridge itself And there we have, and you see that it says read completed. And if we go to our dump file, you'll see that there is a dump number three dot bin. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, perform a write uh, function with this cartridge. So now rest assured the cartridge I had was uh, dumped and it was confirmed to be blank. Uh, so uh, rest assured that was confirmed. Uh, but it allows us to use this cartridge for uh, verifying that the gang writer is in fact working properly. So that's a, a huge asset for uh, all this testing that I perform. So we select write and we again can just select auto and now we will select our uh, demo file uh, which is a binary file that we want to program onto the flash cartridge. So in this case I'm going to select this dolphin demo. Uh, this is one of the uh, demos available with the Game Boy Advance SDK and the samples uh, that are provided. So we're going to go ahead and select this file. We're going to go OK. And we have Erase Before Writing option and Verify After Writing. So we then hit Apply and then we can hit Start. And there you can see that the erase is uh, the first process that is executed. 
and you can see how the erase function is a lot slower uh, than the read function. And this is the same with the writing uh, function. Uh, both of these are, are quite slow. And there the erase is complete and then it moves on to the writing function. And again, you can see how it's quite slow in comparison to the read function. Oh my gosh, so boring. <laughs> and there it's performing the verify, confirming that the written ROM file does match the source file on the PC. And there you can see write complete for cartridge slot number one. Now, of course, that was because we had selected all of the cartridge slots, and that was just accidental when I was um, playing with the tools menu there. I had uh, engaged uh, to select all cartridges. Uh, but again, normally you just select the one that you want to program. So that was a success. Uh, so now we can actually take the flash cartridge and we're gonna insert it into my intelligent systems uh, Game Boy Advance uh, capture unit and that'll allow us to preview uh, the game uh, on a monitor uh, for uh, display. So let's do that now. Let's check it out. So we'll go ahead and insert the cartridge and uh, again this is the little handheld uh, Game Boy Advance unit and this just acts as a little controller uh, but it also has a preview screen but uh, regardless the screen display uh, on the Game Boy Advance handheld uh, is mirrored onto the display monitor. So we'll go ahead and boot that up and we should be able to see the demo load. And there we go. So we got this uh, cool little dolphin demo. Now this was one of the SDK demos. Yeah, so pretty neat to be able to move around and jump through rings and whatnot. So again, it's just more of a, you know, a functional demo and uh, just showing you how to implement some basic code uh, if you were compiling this yourself uh, as part of uh, the SDK uh, demos for uh, developing on the uh, Game Boy Advance. So pretty cool. That's a wrap guys. That's today's video. What a cool system. A lot of similarities with the NU64 Flash Gang Rider, uh, main PCBAs with the uh, EEPROM firmware chips being identical between the two systems. I thought that was pretty neat. And those uh, secondary boards, as well as all the daughter cards uh, to accommodate all the cartridge sockets. Uh, pretty cool design overall, and I thought it was really neat uh, to go in and get the system to work so I could demo it for you guys. Loads of fun. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Hit the like and subscribe if you can. Always appreciated. And we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.